Lord be with you. And also with you. Read it from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. Voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and open our minds to receive your word from pulpit to pew so that we can do what you've called us to do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, St. Philip. Please Good be morning. seated. So recently, I had to be the celebrant for a funeral. And uh, it was a military funeral. And we had really tight time constraints. So that morning before I left home, I made sure I put on my watch just to make sure I had everything in place. So there we are, get ready to start this funeral, and uh, look down, and all of a sudden I couldn't tell what time was on my watch. And I was like, I don't even know what that looks like. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and it wasn't but a few moments later that I realized that in my haste to leave that I had put on my watch upside down. <laughs> so I don't know whether I was super early or super late, but we got through it. And guess what? That story has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about this morning. <laughs> this morning is we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. When we look at the church and the church calendar, we have what's called the infancy narratives. And the infancy narratives goes through, you know, Christmas and it goes through uh, Epiphany. And the infancy narratives conclude at the baptism of Jesus. This is where we are today. So today, we officially are closing out the Christmas season and the infancy narrative. But when we look at this scripture, it's amazing because John is there baptizing. John is there offering the people something new. He's offering them something that they need, and they are coming from their safe places, their towns, their villages. They're coming out to see this guy. This guy who has hair grown off, you know, hadn't had his hair cut since like never. <laughs> I mean, he's dressed in these interesting clothes. He's eaten this interesting diet. They said, you know, he ate locusts and wild honey. Now, if you really don't get excited about somebody eating some bugs and eating some honey. <laughs> but yet, John had a unique power that despite how he looked, despite how he ate, despite all of that, he was drawing people to what he was talking about. He was talking about it is time for people to repent. It is time for us to take stock of where we are. And he was telling the people of their time, there is something better, there's something more, there's something deeper than a daily existence. All of this is right here. But I'm calling you to a higher level. I'm calling you to something different. I'm calling you to something new. I'm calling you to something beyond. I'm calling you to a place where there's going to be peace and joy and all those things in the midst of the complications of everyday life. And people, that message resonated and people were bringing, coming themselves and bringing other folk because they wanted to hear this message. 
John was baptizing them. He was giving them a, a physical sign. He was giving them a, a, you know, sacrament. The definition of sacrament is a outward sign of inward grace. He was giving them this sacrament, this baptism. He was giving them this. He was putting them in the water and, 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 and showing them a new world, a new life, a new beginning. And then here comes Jesus. Huh. Some people probably knew Jesus. He's, from, he's a neighborhood guy. And they probably didn't expect there to be a change. There's Jesus. He's coming with the rest of us. May have been what was said. May have been what was thought. Until Jesus gets to John. And yes, they are cousins. But yet John knows Jesus. John knew Jesus. Remember when Elizabeth and Mary were uh, both expecting their children at the same time, and when Mary came to visit Elizabeth, John the Baptist was leaping in her womb just to be, before he was even born, he was ready to go and tell the world that somebody's coming to save us. Somebody's coming to lift us up. Somebody's coming to save us from our sins. And here is John, face to face, as grown men, in the Jordan. And John was like, no, it should be the other way around. And Jesus was like, no, let's just do this. Basically, Jesus was saying, stay tuned. And sometimes Jesus tells us the same thing, stay tuned. So John goes through the ritual of baptism, and then it becomes clear. Because this isn't normal baptism. He was dunking folk in that river all day long and nothing changed. But when he put Jesus in the water, when Jesus was washing away what he had been doing as a day laborer, as a carpenter, working as a grown man, growing up in Nazareth, when Jesus came up, he came up dude. We got to see the heavens open up because we, now we get to see no more Joseph and Mary's boy because now we get to see who Jesus really is. The heavens open up and God himself speaks. Think about it. God spoke through prophets. God spoke through different things throughout scriptures but at this moment God speaks. God speaks to humanity. And God speaks in 2023 to us. And he said, this is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Now we know who Jesus is, the son of God. Now we know the power that Jesus has, all power. Now that we, we know that this is who he is, just like them at that day. But how do we say this in 2023? We still come to the same place. We still come here. We still come to the times when we don't, we want to believe, but yet we don't quite know how. How do we keep believing when it's tough? How do we keep believing when we struggle? How do we keep believing when all we hear is silence and we look around and all we see is hurt? We turn on the news and all we see is bad news. How do we hang on to this Jesus in the midst of all of the troubles and trials of this world? We sometimes ask, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus when a six-year-old shoots his teacher? Where is Jesus? Yeah. Where is Jesus when tragedy after tragedy seems to fill our television screens every day? I'll tell you where he is. Jesus is right where we want right where we need and right where we expect him to be. He needs to be in our hearts. He needs to be in our prayers. He also needs to be in our belief. Oh yeah, we can see the tragedies and we sympathize and we don't play lightly of them and we pray for those who suffer because there may come a time when we suffer. I've been there and yet in the middle of it, I realize that in my toughest, toughest time, that's 
when Jesus is the closest to me. When it looks like I'm not going to make it, I look around and he's carrying me. Same thing. We're beginning 2023, about a weekend now. And when we look back every year that we've lived here, every year we've been alive, every year is filled with what? Some good things. Every year is filled with some bad things. We have some losses every year. Sometimes we have some unique trials and sometimes things are tough. And then sometimes you get this wonderful breakthrough. I retired at the end of June. And that lasted exactly 45 days. <laughs> the thrill of victory. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> but every year has its peaks and its valleys. 2023 will be the same. It's about how we view the peaks and how we view the valleys. I thank God when I'm on the mountain peaks and I can look out and I can see hopes and promises of days to come. I thank God that when I'm in the valley, I'm not alone. He goes with me. So today, we look around and we see that this Jesus, the beloved Son of God, is our Savior, our brother. He's made us co-heirs with him as we go forward through this year. Let's go forward with confidence, knowing that wherever we go, however we go, Jesus goes with us as long as we invite him along for the ride. Sometimes we, sometimes we leave Jesus at home, leave Jesus in the trunk, leave Jesus in the parking lot. And then when it doesn't work out for us, we're going to call him, hey, come help now. But in 2023, let's take Jesus with us every moment of our lives. Let's take Jesus with us everywhere we go. He knows all about us anyway. But this year, he's going to do something new. This year, he's going to open our eyes and open our lives and show us things we have never seen before. If we trust him, if we believe in him, let's go together in 2023, knowing that there will be a new victory in 2023. God bless you. Amen. Amen.